Good morning, folks. For me, it's a tremendous pleasure to be here talking to such an uh, such an interesting audience, right? I, I love the, the presentations that I saw so far. The DNA archive idea, it's brilliant, it's awesome, so I love to see that. And also, I love to see the presentation from the folks from, my, from, from Amazon. So, very happy to be here. Um, I only have 10 minutes, so I'm going to focus my presentation of how we can combine machine learning and user experience. We've been talking a lot about machine learning and how we can do incredible stuff right with machine learning, but I'm going to focus more today of how we can use this incredible technology to, to improve the, the, your life, to improve the life of the user who has experienced this technology. And that will be my approach today. So I'm going to start with this guy. This is Steven Melinowski. He's a pianist and an engineer, and he had an idea in the 70s. Actually, he had a hallucination <laughs> in the 70s, probably, probably with the help of some artificial, you know, not our intelligence, but some artificial help. He had a, he had a hallucination when, when he was playing his piano at his house he saw the notes from the paper, right, came into life. He saw the notes, he was playing back. <laughs> Try to figure this out. He was playing back and he saw the notes came from the paper and he saw the notes dancing in, in the paper. And he was so delighted with this experience that he decided to develop something to replicate this hallucination, to develop a user interface where a user could see the music happening. And he learned how to, 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 he bought a computer at the time, he, lear he learned how to code, and he developed the user interface that I'm going to show in the next video. So let me see if I can play this video. <laughs> of this user interface, he changed the life of many people who could not just listen to the music, but also see the music, see the flow of the music. For example, I can say from my, my own home, this is my son, Miguel, he's six years old, and he loves now to, watch, to listen music, classical music, because he can see the flow of the music. And most of all, he can foresee what's, what's, what will happen with the music. For example, in, in the last clip, you, you had some, some ups and downs through the music. For example, my son, he gets really excited when he sees that something is about to happen in the music. So through a user interf interface, this guy, Steven Malinox, he changed the way we can consume music. Another example that I have, and I know that probably we have folks here who like basketball. I know that Greg, I don't know if Greg is here, I know that, that you're a big fan of basketball. So this guy, Kirk Gold Goldsberry, he used to be a cartographer, right, who, who was doing research in Harvard, but then he decided to develop a map of how the basketball players was shooting from the court, right? So he, he, he came up to, he had the idea to figure out who was the best shooter in, a, in the NBA using maps, using how they shoot from, 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 from the court. And by the way, Ray, um, by the way, Steve Nash was the best shooter at the time in 2011. When he combined all this, this, this data, he realized that in terms of points per attempt, if you, shot, if you shoot from three or do a layup, that was the best shot at the time uh, combining all the data. Per point, if I analyze points per attempt, the, the, prob the probability of you make the point from a three point or from the layout, from, 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 from the paint, right? Your chance to, to make, to convert the point will be greater. So with that, 
in 2012. By the way, he presented this in the MIT Sloan Sport Conference, and he left the conference as a San Antonio Spurs employee. And because of this paper, and of course, because of the studies that came after this, this paper, the NBA changed completely. If you're watching the NBA in the last year, for example, you're noticing that either people shoot from three or try to do a layup or a dunk, right? It's all about that. Because of course, in terms of economics, that's the best shoot that you can have in, in the NBA. And it's funny, because here, the blue, the blue dots here the, on your left, it's the poorest shoot in the NBA right now, right? So that's exactly what made Michael Jordan, for example, immortal, right? So if you think Michael Jordan completely um, challenged the, the economics of the game. And this, for example, is Brook Lopes. He is a center, but basically he shoots a lot from three because he changed the way he plays because of this, this graph. So the, the reason I, I'm talking about this is to show you guys of how through a user interface, we can change the way people interact with data, right? We inter people under, uh, interact with the assets. And that's exactly what we're doing with our platform. We develop a platform 100% visual because we understand that people deal better with the asset, deal better with the data when people can see the data, when you users can navigate the data, can see, can manipulate the data. And sometimes with using some device, you can touch the data, right? On your left here, for example, you can see all the metadata, all the metadata tagging, all the good stuff from machine learning. But most of just using machine learning, you need to see the data, you need to touch the data, you need to be able to navigate that. And of course, I understand that you guys probably are thinking, yeah, that's awesome, but I have so many assets, right? So how I'm gonna browser 25 millions of assets as the, 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 the folks from Amazon mentioned early. And of course, here we need machine learning. We know that we need machine learning to help us to filter the noise, to help us to bring structure to this huge pile of unstructured data. But at the same time, we know, and I'm rushing here, guys, because I think I'm running out of time. Um, but at the same time, we know that machine learning is awesome, but we still, we still just evolving with the technology, right? This is one of the famous paradox that you have with artificial intelligence, the Moravex paradox. Here, we know that the machine learning can solve very complex problems, no, machine learning can beat the best goal players, can beat the chess players. But for example, in this video here, I'm getting a train coming out of the wall, right? So what the machine learning is lacking in the, in the picture from, from, from the right is it, lack, it, it, lacks, uh, it lacks context, right? The same context that my daughter, my four-year daughter has, that she understands that a train will not come out of, of, out of the a wall, the machine learning doesn't have the, this context, context yet. So, and this is as obvious as I, I can sound here. What, you, what, we, what drive us, what drive our product is how we can combine machine learning and user experience to make you guys to, to, to combine all the machine learning intelligence with the context that you guys bring to the equation and how we can design products this solve problems to this combination of machine learning and user uh, experience. And I thought that this slide is so obvious that, <laughs> that I can sound that I try to make a little bit, you know, cooler with this headset and this chamber. Anyway, uh, and here, this is, this is gonna be probably my last slide. Uh, I love what the Amazon folks t said about working backwards because that's exactly the way we, we think we, 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 we should solve the problems. Here I have the gap between you guys or between a user who wants to find some content and here I have some content begging to be found, right? The way we go here, it's literally back backwards. I need to understand from the user perspective how he, the user wants to navigate the data, how, which kind of searches the user wants to apply if, if, if the user wants to search by using questions, by using natural language, if its speech is more important than the visual, I want to understand from the user how I can make the data available to them. Then, of course, I need to use machine learning, right? I need to, to have some power to filter the noise here. And then, by the way, in some cases, I have the physical data that I, that I need to digitalize, that I need to preserve, and we can do this end to end. For example, in this case, 
I want to see the user experience is you guys wanting to see all the clips from a particular camera cut, for example. Here I'm using machine learning to do similarity, to do image similarity, to find all the clips with this image from this, 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 from this camera. Here, for example, I have the act of pitching, right? The user interface here is you guys trying to find players pitching the ball and probably I want to combine this with logo from, from companies, right? You, is, you guys are giving me the, the feedback of what you expect from the data and I'm using machine learning in the back end to provide the data. And finally, this one I think it's, it's awesome. This one we search, right? Some archivist, for example, can have the, can have the idea of searching Willie Mays talking about sending Colfax, right? The, the, the biggest rival in the sixty, and by doing facial similarity, for example, by searching by keywords, I can find this clip from Willie Mays, and in this clip, he's talking about what he thinks about Sandy Colfax, and his answer was strikeout. So, which is pretty awesome. And that's all, guys. That's all that I have for you.